How will Brexit affect future export and import opportunities for dairy products? Firstly, to EU countries, and secondly, to non-EU markets. So, who, who wants to have that easy question to start with? Hmm? Paul, go on. Yes, you look like you might want to answer. <laughs> a volunteer is better than a press man, exactly, Chairman. Exactly, every time. Yeah, for, from a dairy industry perspective rather than a company perspective, Chairman, uh, obviously we are um, exporters. Um, we export one point. We, we manufacture about seven point seven billion tonnes of product, and we export one point uh, one million. So, you know, fifteen percent of our output is exported. And this is tonnes. This is what tons, we call yeah. cheese. No, tons of dairy products. Right. Um, so that would be a combination of cheese, milk powders, uh, 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 and other products, butter. <laughs> Um, so we are exporting about 15 per cent of our current output at the moment. Um, obviously in, in a Brexit scenario um, we would like to think that those exports will continue. Uh, as an industry we have been growing our exports. And that 15 per cent, how much of it goes to Europe, all of it? Uh, I would say about 85 to 90 per cent of that ends up in the mainland, mainland Europe and, and that is you know, that, a key market for the dairy industry. Um, obviously we have third country exports as well. So from an industry perspective, we would like to think post-Brexit that those exports will continue. Um, obviously, a lot of that will be dependent on the outcome of the Brexit uh, discussions. Um, but from an industry perspective, we are hoping that they will continue uh, and that we have unrestricted access to the European market and to the other markets that we, we currently deal with. From, um, I suppose, predominantly in Northern Ireland perspective, um, our dairy industry is worth about 1.1 billion sterling. Um, 65 per cent of that turnover is exported, um, quite a considerable amount of it actually to the EU, about 40 per cent of our production goes there and 23 per cent goes to Great Britain. Um, so we are very 23 goes where? To GB. Right there. Um, so we are very much an export focused and orientated industry. It is quite a successful industry. Um, considerable investment has gone into that industry um, in the past uh, four to five years. Um, really trying to bring some value add to the, to the milk streams. So, a um, um, lot of investment in cheddar cheese and retail cheddar cheeses, uh, bringing up the value chain. A lot of investment in powders, uh, getting into the infant formula arena with value add. Um, so, the cheddar cheeses would be what m much of the sort of supermarket own brands, would they be, or what? Yeah, there's a mixture of brands and own brands, yes, um, right across the range. Can I refer to the committee that I know the two middlemen personally? Mm. Well, it doesn't say they'll get an easy time, but uh, that's right. You make sure you give them a hard time, please. Yes, right. yes, well, hardish. <laughs> um, it was mentioned there about tariffs in relation to um, the tariff rate quotas and all the rest of it. To what extent would the EU imposing tariffs on dairy produce affect UK exports to the EU? How would that affect your industry? And reversely, how might the imposition of tariffs on EU imports to the UK affect this, the sector as well? First, David, um, obviously tariffs. Uh, we, we operate in an environment at the moment where there are no tariffs. Uh, if tariffs were to be imposed on exports, uh, and as a company uh, uh, and a trade association uh, speaking, you know, exports are critical uh, for our business uh, and for our industry. If you go back to the 15 per cent that I quoted, um, tariffs could uh, block um, exports and equally um, they could block imports. Um, or if tariffs were to be accepted on imports, uh, you would see um, inflation at consumer level increasing quite rapidly. Um, so tariffs is not something that we would want So you, you can see those sort of tariffs sort of immediately, um, I mean some of it you could absorb I suppose as the companies and, and, and the industry, but a lot of that would go to the consumer really. Well if, if you take cheese as an example, uh, Chairman, you know the tariff, WT, WTO tariffs on dairy do what they are designed to do, they will stop trade. Um, <laughs> So WT, WTO tariff on cheese um, is of the order of 40 to 50 per cent depending on the cheese variety. So we don't make 50 per cent margins uh, in this sector. So the ability to absorb um, is minimal if, if not non-existent. So they would either block trade um, or they would be reflected in consumer prices. That reflection in consumer prices will have the knock-on consequence of reducing demand for dairy. 
So it's, 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 not a, it's a vicious circle, it's not a virtuous circle. Anybody else want to add? Um, and it, just to elaborate more on that point, if I could, Chairman, you're left with a very difficult decision then on whether um, you have tariffs that will lead to food inflation that is bad for the industry overall and bad for the consumer, or uh, opening up um, our precious industry, our market, to um, um, other nations importing products in and that would have different standards and different costs, and that could signal um, a very grave future for our agriculture overall and our farmers. So it's, um, there, there's no simple solution to how you manage the, uh, the tariff uh, conundrum. And AHDB have, have done an analysis, um, and again, I'm trying to remember it all back, but um, one of the things from memory that they're saying is that there would have to be uh, a certain amount of um, support to farmers, dairy farmers, um, if they were to stay in business, if there was uh, a WTO scenario. So just simply having uh, free trade and having no support um, would probably uh, eradicate the dairy industry in Ireland. Mm. Northern Ireland. Mm. I think our, our view, our worst case scenario is that we end up with WTO rules and actually in order to keep food inflation down, actually there's no tariffs to, to import dairy products into the UK. And at that point, it's, it's how do we actually compete on that that playing field which certainly wouldn't be level. These guys wouldn't be in a good place and neither would uh, you know, the dairy farmers as primary producers. So, you know, that's, that is the worst case. Um, so I hope, I hope this hasn't been sort of touched on before while I haven't been here, but what sort of trade policy objectives do you believe the government uh, needs to establish to ensure that the dairy sector flourishes after Brexit? Um, I, I think what we want is as close to what we have today in terms of market access, um, no tariffs and no non-tariff barriers. Okay. Everyone, is everyone uh, pretty much in agreement on that? Okay. From the guys there that have trade with the Republic and Northern Ireland, how would you like to see that developed? Um, and I'm sure it's as frictionless as possible, but what's your ideal world? Um, and the ideal picture that you would want to see coming out of the Brexit negotiations? But at the moment, it's almost like squaring the circle, right? Um, having an east-west solution for a north-south problem um, from a Northern Ireland economy perspective is very challenging. 60% yeah. of our exports of all goods and services from Northern Ireland go into GB. 23% goes into the EU. Um, and how and how much of your how much of that that you are going into the UK um, and into the EU is actually coming from the, the Republic of Ireland? Um, there is a significant trade deficit from the Republic of Ireland into GB today. Yeah. Um, sure. the Republic of Ireland would supply in it varies, but about eighty-five to ninety thousand tons of cheddar, uh, as an example. Um, but looking at it from a Northern Ireland perspective. Um, GB is a significant marketplace yeah, for our economy absolutely. and for our dairy industry, as yeah. we were saying before. Um, so echoing what's been said previously here uh, this afternoon, um, as frictionless and as free trading as possible is the objective. Understanding the challenges that if we're outside of a customs union, that requires a circle to be squared. And have you any, uh, you know, I, again, I'll ask you a question like I did at the beginning. Have you any practical ideas about how um, such a system would work outside the customs union? Well, it was, uh, the, the first practical idea would be to stay in. <laughs> 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 That's not the question yeah. I asked. No, no. <laughs> <laughs>